Welcome to this podcast on e-communications or electronic communications. This will involve a discussion about questions related to networks and to the internet in computing. These topics were from question 5 of the 2023 Computer Applications Technology or CAT November exam. There are three ways you can engage with the content of this podcast. If you want to test your knowledge, then download the questions covered in the video. The link is in the PDF in the video description. Then attempt these questions. And then once you've done that, come back and listen to the discussed answers and compare them with what your answers are. Or number two, if you want to use the podcast to learn new information, then listen to the discussion first. Then download the questions from the document. The link is in the video description. And then test yourself to see how much you remember from the discussion. And the third way is to simply enjoy the discussion and learn more about e-communications. So now let's hear what our podcasters have to say on e-communications. All right, everyone, welcome back to another deep dive. Yeah, welcome back. Into some of the really cool stuff in the world of computer science. Exactly. Today, we are going to be looking at internet and network technologies. That's right. And we have kind of a fun source do. for this deep dive. We are going to be looking at an exam paper, mm -hmm. which is really interesting because it gives us like a very focused yes. lens to look at this topic through. Yeah, it does. And what's really cool about this exam paper is it asks a bunch of really interesting questions. Right. And then we're going to try and answer those questions yes. using our expertise. Exactly. And also just, you know, have a little fun with it. So yeah. if you are a high school student taking computer theory, yes. this is the episode for you. Definitely. So let's jump in. Why would we even bother with wireless networks? Oh, well, that's a great question. Yeah. Because sometimes you don't want to be, you know, tied to a desk. <laughs> right. Exactly. Especially in this day and age. Freedom of movement, it's key. Exactly. So wireless networks give you that freedom. Let's imagine yeah. you are setting up your Wi-Fi at home. Do you really want to be running cables all over your house? I mean, think about if you trip. Exactly. Tripping hazards, cable clutter. It's just a mess. So wireless is just like easy. Exactly. Easy setup. No more cable mess. Plus, yeah. you can easily expand your network. You want to add a new device. No problem. Just connect it to the Wi-Fi. Right. So, yeah, wireless networks are definitely the way to go these days. Absolutely. And you know what else we do wirelessly? A lot these days. Video calls. Video calls. Oh, yeah, for sure. All the time, right. Absolutely. They've become such a part of our lives. Right. And this exam paper actually had a question about video conferencing etiquette. Oh, really? Which I thought was really interesting. It's like, you know, we're so used to just jumping on a video call. Right. But there are actually some guidelines we should follow. <laughs> so what do we need to do? Like, what's the proper way to video conference? Well, first of all, appearances matter, right? Okay. So even though you might be joining from your bedroom, right. you still want to dress appropriately, uh, Okay, you know, present a professional image. And I'm guessing good audio is important. Oh, absolutely. Make sure you have a good microphone so everyone can hear you clearly. No one wants to strain to hear you mumbling. Oh, yeah. I've been on those calls. We've all been there. And, of course, a quiet environment as uh, much as possible. Right. Try to keep the dog. Exactly. Keep the dog out. The kid's quiet. Yeah. Find a nice, quiet space where you can focus. And one thing I've definitely definitely been guilty of is having like 50 tabs open oh yeah on my computer and I'm like sharing my screen and it's like oh no oh that is embarrassing so the source mentioned closing those extra tabs yeah it's a good tip it helps you avoid distractions makes sense and present a more focused image right and while we're talking about all this online stuff we can't forget about that little component that makes all this online activity possible you're talking about the NIC the NIC. The Network Interface Card. Yeah, what is that? Well, think of it as like the bridge between your computer software and that physical network cable. Oh, oh. It has this unique identifier called a mass address, and it handles all those communication protocols that allow data to flow back and forth. Wow. It's pretty crucial. It really is. And speaking of online, yeah, we're living in the midst of the fourth industrial revolution. The 4IR. The 4IR. I know. It sounds like something out of a sci-fi movie. Totally. But it's happening right now, and this exam paper actually mentions some of the key technologies driving this revolution. Okay, so like what? Like robots and flying cars? Well, maybe not flying cars just yet, but definitely robots. Okay. We're talking about artificial intelligence where machines are learning and solving problems like humans. Wow. 
And then you have augmented and virtual reality. Oh, right. AR, VR. Exactly. Anyone who plays video games is probably familiar with those. They're changing the way we experience entertainment, education, even healthcare. Right. It's like stepping into a whole new world. Exactly. And let's not forget about 3D printing. Oh, right. We're getting closer and closer to a world where you could potentially print a replacement part for your dishwasher at home. That would be amazing. Wouldn't it? Yeah. No more waiting for weeks for a part to arrive. Exactly. Awesome. And underlying a lot of these advancements is the power of cloud computing. The cloud, yeah. Everyone's talking about the cloud. So what is it? What is the cloud? Well, imagine a vast network of servers mm. that store and process data. So instead of relying solely on your phone or your laptop, yeah. you can access information and applications from anywhere. Oh, okay. So that's why they call it the cloud. It's like this invisible. Exactly. It's everywhere and nowhere at the same time. That's so cool. So it's like storage, right? Exactly. Think about all the photos, videos, music you have on your phone. Yeah. The cloud gives you a massive amount of space to store all that stuff. Oh, okay, because I've definitely run out of storage on my phone before. It happens to the best of us. And then you have to like go through and be like, okay, do I need this photo? Do I need this video? Exactly. So the cloud solves that problem. That's great. But speaking of the internet, yeah. let's talk Wi-Fi setup. Yeah. Setting up your own Wi-Fi network can be a bit of a challenge, right? It can be. Yeah. There are a few things you need to keep in mind. First and foremost, security. Security, yeah. You want to make sure you're using a strong, unique password right. to prevent any unauthorized access to your network. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. And then you want to consider the coverage area, like how far does the signal need to reach? Right, because if you have a big house, exactly, you need to make sure the signal can get to every room. And then there are different Wi-Fi standards okay. that offer different speeds and ranges, so Choosing the right one for your needs is important. Right. You know, you don't want to be stuck with slow Wi-Fi. No, absolutely not. Oh, and don't forget about interference. Oh, the dreaded interference. Yeah, one time I couldn't figure out why my Wi-Fi kept dropping. Oh. And it turned out to be my microwave. Yeah. yeah so confused. It can be anything from microwaves to cordless phones, all sorts of things. Well, that's good to know. Okay, so we talked about Wi-Fi, which is like a bigger network. Yeah. But then there are also these things called PANs. Yes, personal area networks. Which is like Bluetooth, right. Exactly. Think about your Bluetooth headphones or connecting to a wireless printer. Okay, yeah. So what are the limitations there? Because it's obviously not as powerful as Wi-Fi. Well, PANs are great for short-range communication, but their limited range is the main drawback. Right. You can't be across the house. Exactly. You're typically restricted to just a few meters. Okay. Plus, they can be susceptible to interference. Oh, yeah. Like if there's a lot of devices. Exactly. Yeah. And slower speeds compared to Wi-Fi. Right. Which is why my headphones sometimes cut out at the worst possible time. It happens. Now... This exam paper had a mystery picture, which I thought was interesting. Oh, yeah. And it depicted something called throttling. Can you explain what that is? Throttling is when your internet service provider intentionally slows down your connection speed. What? Why would they do that? Well, usually if you've been using a lot of data, okay, it's often tied to their fair use policies, which are meant to ensure everyone has a reasonable share of the available bandwidth. So they're basically saying you've had enough internet for one day. Kind of, yeah. That seems a little unfair. It can be frustrating, especially if you're in the middle of streaming a movie or downloading a large file. Right, totally, because then you're just sitting there waiting. Exactly. But it's a reality of how Internet services are managed. Interesting. Okay. Well, I think we've covered a lot of ground today. Yeah, we have. Wireless networks give us freedom and flexibility. Yes. Video calls require a bit of etiquette. Mm -hmm. We can't forget about... The NIC, the unsung hero of our online connections. And then, of course, the fourth industrial revolution. It's bringing some crazy advancements. It really is. The cloud is revolutionizing how we store and access data. Absolutely. Wi-Fi setup requires careful consideration. Don't forget about interference. Yes. And PANs are great for short-range communication, but they have limitations. Yeah. And then, of course, there's throttling which can put a damper on our internet speeds. That's right. But overall, I think it's amazing how all these seemingly disparate concepts are interconnected, right? Yeah, it really is. And this is just scratching the surface. Right. It's only going to get more complex and interesting as technology continues to evolve. Totally. So here's a final thought for all of you listening. With all the advantages of cloud computing, what are some potential downsides? What happens if you lose internet access? Mm, that's a good question. What about security concerns? 
I encourage you to do your own research and consider the full picture. Definitely. But that's all for today's deep dive. Thanks for joining us. Hopefully you've gained some valuable insights that will help you ace your computer theory class. Or just understand the world around you a little better. And maybe even spark a passion for the world of technology. Absolutely. Until next time. Bye. If I can ask the hugest favor is that you can please be a subscriber to the channel. Make sure you share us with your friends as well as on TikTok at Mr. Long Education. And give us feedback about what you think about this podcast. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long way.